learn from it, um, ask good questions, and work with those. Effective listening is probably the main thing we're going to talk about today. If you go away and just learn to listen and read people, I will be happy. What I want you to do in these visits is use two ears and one mouth is to come in and listen. I think we were born, God created us to listen with double the amount of ability than what we use. We have classes in school on speech. We have classes on teaching. We have classes on preaching. We have classes on all these things that use the mouth. I don't know of any classes on listening. They tried to teach me that in kindergarten. Obviously it didn't work. You know, Larry, just be quiet and listen. But I'm going to talk today about you listening. Learning how to walk in the room and be appropriate with their needs. What happens when people don't listen to you? What happens when your barber doesn't listen to you? Your, your hair stylist? You come out and go, <coughs> I told them one inch! What happens when your physician doesn't listen to you? When you go, I really don't want that procedure. I really don't want to do that. And they're, what, what, okay? What happens when you don't listen to people? Well, you didn't think about that as much. You thought, well, huh? I mean, I'm trying my best. I'm trying to listen to their needs. More refreshments coming back there. Anybody wants to get a soda? Will you unscramble the word listen for me and come up with another six-letter word using those same letters, starting with an S? Silent. Silent. Very smart guy. I moved to the front of the class. <laughs> I think part of listening, if you would get the definition here, is just be silent. I can't listen and talk at the same time. I can multitask, but I can't listen and talk at the same time. Actually, even when I'm quiet with my wife, I'm still not listening. <laughs> she, she tells me I'm still not listening. I go, I'm trying, honey. I'm teaching on it every day. I'm trying, but, you know, I still don't get it. So I'm, I've got a lot of good practice to work on. Listening involves loving and adventurous listening and compassionate care. It's not about me, which I've talked about many times. Eye contact helps with that, that I'm looking you in the eye, and they see me listening. I, have you walked into somebody's office sometime, and they've invited you in, okay, come on in, please, and they're still writing, and they're still working with stuff. You go, you're not listening to me. Oh, yeah, I am, yeah, I am. Go ahead, keep talking. No, you're not. What do kids do, little kids? When you're looking away, they grab your face, <laughs> move it toward you. They go, you're not listening to me. Look at me in the eye. Okay? Well, that's what big kids are saying to his patients. Look at me. Look me in the eye. Pay attention to me. Open-ended questions, which we've talked about, are good ways of listening. Uh, say something like, tell me more about this. This is the discovery. They've said they're atheists. They've said they don't go to church. they said they're afraid about their pain. they said that this di diagnosis scares them to death. Tell me more about that. Or would you like to talk about that? No, not anymore. So you're working with their comfort level of dealing with whatever they're talking about. Ask them, what are you going to do about this? They go, my husband is abusive to me. I don't know what I'm going to do about this marriage. And you would like to say, dump the jump. You know? Mm -hmm. what, what are you, are you silly? Get away from this. But you could say, what are you going to do about this? Well, I think I need to leave him. How are you going to do that? Well, I think I need to get a little money aside, and I think I need to have a little bag to escape if, if this abuse happens again. Who else do you need to call for some help? I mean, it's, but you, you want to go, oh, you need to do this. You know, you've got all your counseling plan. But what I found out that people don't really listen to your counseling plan, they listen to their counseling plan. If you help them come up with it, they will do it. If you tell them, I didn't want you to do, here, write it down right now, these five things, they won't do it. But if you say, what five things are you going to do? I've done this in one counseling session before the hospital. I go, do you know right from wrong? <clears throat> yep. 
What you're doing right now, is it right or wrong? Wrong. Are you going to keep doing it? I don't think so. Do you know what right is? Yep. Do you plan to start doing that now? Yep. Okay, I'll see you later. I had no idea what right and wrong was with them. But you know what? They were going to do it. They were going to change. I didn't have to go, so what is the wrong thing in your life? Okay. Now, I don't mind discovering there. But it was that simple, you know right from wrong. Yep. You know what wrong is? Yep. You think you need to stop that? Yep. <laughs> and I can move on from there. And they've got their plan of action. Rather than go, well, I'm going to tell you what right and wrong is, and you need to do these things, and then you'll be a good Christian. Well, they may not go that route. So you're helping them learn from that. Effective listening is touch, and handshakes, and high fives, and all kind of way of, and there's appropriate touch where sometimes just kind of touch on the shoulder. Just any kind of touch for our lead. Now I'm going to talk in a minute about reading people. Some people don't want to be touched. Can you read that? You know the stoic type. Don't touch them. Okay? And some people love being touched. <laughs> and you're going, well, 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 you know? It may be that, that uh, kind of hug from one arm here because they're going, whoa, Chaplin! You know? Well, there's that boundary too with the male and female sexual thing where they're taking things the wrong way in the touch. And then, you see, my CP supervisor, I'm taking an advanced class right now in clinical pastor education. Uh, two weeks ago, I put in my clinical pastor report of what I did a visit, and I showed where I hugged someone, and he goes, Larry, I don't think a hospital chaplain should ever hug somebody. I go, really? He goes, no, it's not my place as a chaplain. I'm like, well, I vehemently disagree. I need to be aware. I need to read people, but some people desperately need a touch. And they desperately need a hug. And if I can read when that's appropriate, that could be the best ministry I do without ever opening my mouth, just kind of go, come here. Now, what if you say, I'm not a hugger? Well, I didn't used to be either until one strong, tough man's man came along in my church and go, Larry, why did you walk past me? Come here, come here, come here, boy, come here. And I go, okay. You know, I wasn't a hugger. My dad wasn't a hugger. Well, he taught me how to hug. And he taught me that people need a hug, okay? So it wasn't an effeminate thing. It wasn't a female thing. It was people need hugs from male and female. But we need to be appropriate. We need to be sure they're not taking it the wrong way. And you need to know yourself when you want to hug, okay? When you're going, I know I'd like to hug that one. <laughs> you know? <laughs> right? But I better not hug that one, okay? Come on now, we're human. I don't care what, what title you've got in front of your name. Right? Right. You better know your own senses and what's going on. Just like you're reading them, you better look in the mirror every now and then. Okay? Same way. Because when they misinterpret that, then they go, oh boy, what kind of chaplain was that? What kind of hospital is that? What's going on here? Right? So we need to be aware of ourselves, our needs, their needs. I believe we were created to listen, to use our ears and not our mouth. Uh, listening takes a lot of work, a lot of practice, but pays good dividends. Now, reading. I want to give you the basics when you learn how to read what you're looking for. Okay? Listening is one thing. Reading is the other. God gave us two eyes and one mouth. So I think we were created to read. Okay? And when you get done today, you're going to go, Honey, guess what? I learned to read today. Okay? We're going to learn to read people. We're going to learn to read body language. We're going to learn to read when they're ready to talk and not ready to talk. We're going to learn to read when they're ready to talk about what theology you just introduced and they're not ready to talk about. We're going to, I hope you stay away from politics, but if you were to get there and they're not ready to talk about it and you read it, you go, uh-oh, and you back out. Here's what you're going to see first. 
you're going to see nonchalant crossing of arms and legs. 